Are you going to say hello? Or are you hey, everybody. Well, you used to you used to point at me or something. You don't you, need me to you don't do it anymore. <laughs> and we're off to a great start. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Hello, hello. Happy Friday evening. Mm -hmm. Hope you had a great week and you are looking forward to your weekend. Hope you've got something fun planned. <laughs> Cat wants in your lap. Yes. The dogs aren't in here, so she wants first dibs here. I am Robin, and behind the computer and behind the camera is Bill. We are Raincross Farms Makery. We are just outside of Lewiston, Idaho, and we like to craft, and we like to go live and show you new ideas and new techniques and help you to be creative. So welcome. Join us. Pop in, say hello, well, so we know you're watching. Hi, Leanna. And I'm going to drag this up on my phone. We have a very needy cat tonight, so she might make an appearance. Who knows? Welcome, welcome. I see a couple people on, but they haven't said hello, so please say hello. Hello. Oh, <laughs> not you, not you. Okay, I see. It says Linda's watching. She hasn't said hello yet. Hey, Teresa. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Alana. Yep, you we, we kind of been talking with you. <laughs> okay, welcome. So tonight we are going to do a fun craft. It shouldn't. I always say this. It shouldn't take too long, but um. Something that I've seen that's very popular, and I was just in town today, and I was at TJ Maxx, and I was over looking at their little home decor, and something I saw a lot of were farmhouse beads. I don't know if you're trying, they're like a little string of beads, and you just kind of lay them here and there carelessly, like they just don't care, and they, they make cute decor. And I had made some in the past, and I took them to a craft fair, and boy, did they sell out fast. And I just never replaced them. So I'm going to show you how I make a set of farmhouse beads. Super easy. Lots of possibilities. I'm going to use, on one end, there's usually a tag or, or um, um, some sort of little wooden doodad or something. So I'm going to use one of our tag minis. And this these come in a set of six. I'm just going to use one. You could use, you could use anything. You could just use a scrap piece of wood. These are about an eighth of an inch thick. They're, they are made out of wood. They're pre-painted white. They have a hole in them. They come with uh, little strings, but we're not going to use those. So we're going to use one of these. It's a three by five, but again, you can use whatever, whatever you have handy. And well, you, you attach beads to like presents and all kinds yeah. of stuff. So, not, so, so at one end, there's like, there's usually like a little tag that has some cute little saying and then the beads and then a tassel. So we're going to, we're going to make all of that. Now to decorate this up on one side, I'm going to Mod Podge a napkin. And that reminds me, Linda, I got your package today. Thank you so much. I got a package of, um, some little napkins and a little surface, and I sure appreciate it. That was fun to get. I'm usually sending out happy mail. It was nice to, to receive some, so thank you. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna Mod Podge part of this napkin on, on one side, and then on the other side, I'm gonna use a part of our club transfer. So this is our farm words, and it's got, it's got a barn, and it's got home, but it's got these other cute little sayings. It's like home sweet that goes with home, or you could repeat the word home, or farm fresh, or simply blessed. So we're gonna use, I think we're gonna use the simply blessed and this little green leaf to decorate the other side. So let's get started. So this is made out of wood and painted. One side I'm going to Mod Podge on. The other side though, I'm going to I'm going to chalk on it with one of those designs and I'm going to distress the edges on this side. Not on not on the Mod Podge side because it won't show. But I'm just going to take my sanding block and I'm just going to 
rough up the edges so I get a little bit of that paint off of the edges. So it looks a little worn. Hi, Patty. Hi, Patty. Teresa, you need some of those. Talking about the tags, the napkins. I don't know. I, I wasn't paying attention I think when you typed about that. The tag. Okay. So well, you didn't give us a supply lift. That's, that's you, I didn't give a supply lift because the main thing, well, not the main thing. One of the main things is the transfer, and it's only available to club members. So I can't put it in a cart for you to purchase because only the club members get it. So if you're interested in joining the club, you can type in club and find out about joining and getting this month's transfer. Um, if, you if you're interested in the tags, you can just type in tags. Now my bot won't send you anything, but I will go back on and, and send you a link to just the tags if you're interested in purchasing them. Or you can type in shop and it will take you to my online catalog. And you can, you can look around towards the back where the surfaces are. Okay, so hoping you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just taking the painted edges off right around there. Now, I have all this paint dust. So I'm going to close my drawer and wipe that off. And of course, I'm getting it all over me. That's okay. I'm gonna gonna go to bed after this anyway, so okay. So I've got that. I'm gonna end up waxing it, but I'm not gonna wax it before I do the Mod Podge. So Mod Podge. I don't know if you've seen me do this before. My favorite method of decoupage because I don't get I don't get wrinkles in whatever it is I lay down on this because I don't keep the Mod Podge wet. And I'll show you my trick. If you've never tried it before, this is amazing. And you will probably never go back to any other Mod Podge method, method again. Okay, so I just take some Mod Podge and I brush on a decent amount. Not super, super thick, but I want to make sure I get to all of those edges. And I don't have to worry too much about brush strokes. One thing I will tell you is that because we're going to put down just this single layer of napkin, whatever, whatever color is underneath is going to show through. So if this was natural wood, it would, it would kind of show through a, a brownish tint. So you probably, in order to keep the, the brightest colors, you probably want to paint your surface white. You don't have to, but because your napkin is so see-through, you're probably going to see whatever color your base is. Okay, oh, you are a club member. Okay, well, if you're a club member, then you already have this transfer. And if you need a link to the tags, just let me know. I'll be glad to get that for you. Okay, so now I'm going to dry the Mod Podge. I know you're thinking, but no, you need to glue it down. I am going to, but just you wait. Oh, yeah, we're just, waiting. Just you wait. Because over waiting here, over here, so tell me if you have done this Mod Podge method, method before. If you've watched me before, you may have seen it. If you follow my page, you, hopefully you saw my reel or story or whatever, however I posted it. So I'm just going to dry that. And then I'm going to, the secret is I'm going to take an iron. And I'm actually going to iron it on. And the heat from the iron actually uh, reactivates or melts, remelts the Mod Podge. And it adheres whatever napkin or tissue paper or wrapping paper that you are trying to apply. And it makes that firm surface of glue. And you don't have to worry about this getting too moist and wet. That's what causes those wrinkles because you're not putting it on wet glue. 
so I've got this this is this is dry I'm going to take my napkin and I am going I pre-started it but now I don't remember which edge I started mm -hmm. it's always the hard part I think I think it was there is pulling off just the very top layer now this looks like it's a two ply napkin some napkins are three ply you want to get it down to just the very top layer and I think I got this napkin at Hobby Lobby if I'm not mistaken so let me know if you think you've seen them at Hobby Lobby okay so Linda said she did that's an ironing method. She did it with scrapbook paper also. Uh, yes. You can do it with paper, you can do it with tissue paper, you can do it with you can do it with fabric. You just have a little bit harder time cleaning off the edges when you use fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on my heat mat and I'm going to position the napkin where I want it. Yeah, I really like a pretty napkin. I, I really like the the wood grain. I like the flowers. It's just really she asked pretty. Asked a question earlier. Do you um do you have any on your VIP page? I'm thinking to links or um do you have any in your VIP? Um, are you talking about the the tags? If you are you talking about a shopping link? Tell me a little bit more, because I didn't respond as soon as it came up. Okay, so I pushed that down, and I, I kind of finger-pressed it to make sure there's no, um, there's no wrinkles to start with. And I'm going to get some parchment paper. Not wax paper, but parchment paper. That will protect, because these are, these are kind of um, sensitive inks, on the napkin and if I heat them too much the ink is probably going to melt and melt into the plate of my iron so I don't want that so I'm going to cover this with parchment paper don't use wax paper because then then that wax just melts and gets everywhere and I'm using my little mini press from Cricut but you can use a regular household iron um, you don't want it you don't want it super super hot but you you want it good and hot okay and you just press it down. It doesn't take very long. You focus on those edges because that's where really where you want it to adhere is those edges. And it really only takes a second or two. Again, we are just melting or reactivating that Mod Podge and it makes it, it makes it sticky again and it adheres to that napkin so this will be hot so be careful when you pick it up and you just want to check as soon as you can touch it that all the edges that all the edges are stuck down and they seem to be next i'm going to get back out my sanding block and this is the best way to clean up the edges you could cut it with scissors, but you're going to leave some edges. You could cut it with an X-Acto knife, but get yourself a sanding block or sanding paper or an emery board. And you're going to take it, this is from the Dollar Tree, you're going to take it and you're just going to go straight down the edge. Just one direction, just straight down. And it cuts off those edges right up flush with the with the the edge of the the tag so look at that is that not pretty so pretty 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 she, she was asking about the tags discount or you know oh. discount page on the tags okay oh um i don't have them on sale right now i'm st i still have a sale on um tools and accessories and I think I'm going to end that on Sunday night so if there's any tools or accessories you want you can look on the VAP page for Bill's it's Bill's birthday tool and accessory sale I don't have the tags on sale though but 
I, I need to do a uh, surface discount, surface sale soon. Okay, ooh, Christmas wrapping paper, that would be pretty. Okay, so I've got that done. I'm going to take my little pokey tool. Pokey. And I'm just gonna poke out that, that hole. Okay. So now on this side is where I'm going to chalk my words. Now, um, because it's wood, it's kind of got wood grains and that kind of gives it grooves that the paste can kind of leak out of. So we like to use wax on our wood surfaces. And instead of using, generally I use my clear paste wax, my surface wax that I sell in the store. I could use this, but I want to age this a little bit. So I'm going to use the dark wax. This I got off of Amazon, but I know I've seen it in craft stores. It is Howard brand Chalk Teak Dark Wax, and it's just paste wax, but it's tinted dark. Uh, people who refinish furniture use this but we are going to use it on our tag and it's going to tone down the white. It's going to kind of give it a, an antique look. Okay, so I'm going to take just a little bit. It's also paste wax. I'm just going to take a little bit and you can see it goes on pretty dark, but I'm, it, it kind of, cause I'm going to wipe it off and I'm going all the way to those edges that I sanded. Helps show up all the, the texture of the wood. The gray, it shows up the, the gray, wood grain. Yeah. It's just a really pretty effect. And what I think I'm also going to do, I'm also going to um, just run a little bit of wax over this napkin because the napkin is just paper. So if this were to get, this were to get wet, it would, it would kind of wrinkle up might reactivate the Mod Podge. So the wax is just a, a little bit of barrier against any type of moisture, and it kind of darkens it up too. Makes it look a little more antique maybe. Mm -hmm. So I, I put a little bit of wax on and then I buff it off. And I'm gonna make sure the edges get it too. So I've got that a little bit protected and now I'm going to really buff this side because if there's too much wax, my chalk paste won't want to stick to it. Okay, so I'm going to go to a clean area, continue buffing. Okay, that feels good. If it feels waxy, you still have too much wax on. There is still a fine layer of wax, but if it's so much that you feel it, then that's too much. I don't know quite how to say that. You just kind of have to experience it. They're saying it's cute. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and I've got a little bit of Mod Podge on that edge. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my transfer and, oh, here it is at the top, pull it out. Again, this is our monthly transfer only. Club members and designers can get it. And you can see I have well used it on a couple other projects. And I think, I think I'm gonna do Simply Blessed and this little leafy, this little leaf. Okay, so I'm going to fuzz it just a little bit because I haven't used this section before. So I'm just putting a little bit of fuzz not that much fuzz. A little bit of fuzz on the back. We could probably provide some dog hair. Oh, we definitely can provide dog hair. Yeah, it's and getting to be spring. These two are starting to drop all their fur. And I'm going their, to... All their under fur. I'm not going to completely center it because of that hole up top. It will look a little, a little bit off-centered. So I've got... Simply blessed. I'm pushing that down so there's no air bubbles. I'm feeling for any big chunks of, of uh, okay, I'm going to put that on later. 
looking for any big chunks of fuzz or anything that I need to pull out of there. So once that is attached down there, I'm going to use my chalk paste and I'm going to do, because this is, is very brown. No, it is not my favorite color. <laughs> I'm going to use our dark brown, our bark paste. This is Chalkology paste. So it is chalk in paste form, perfectly formulated to work with our silk screen transfers. We also have a white cat. So she always comes around when you're wearing something dark. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of paste on my squeegee and drag that squeegee across the screen where you see those openings where you could see that white, that is a fine mesh silk screen. That's what allows us to apply the paste with such detail. Okay, Think clean fingers and peel and reveal. I'm gonna go slowly. So if there's any spots that I missed, I can lay it right back down. Okay, so I've got Simply Blessed. Okay, and I'm gonna put that on a drying mat and I'm going to spray it with water till I'm ready to clean it. There we go. I have a couple little spots that bled, but I think because I waxed it, I can actually scrape that off when it's dry. So when our paste is dry, it is smudge and budge proof, meaning I'll be able to rub on that and it's not going to smear or come off once it's dry. I'm drying this up and then I'm going to put down this other piece and I'm going to chalk it in green and then I'll have my little tag. Okay. Okay. I'm done with the bark. Put it in the lid okay. and I'm going to fuzz this a bit. Okay, and then I'm going to enter this under the words as best as I can. And again, push it down, making sure no air bubbles. And this I'm gonna use pesto, which is kind of an avocado green. And that does not look like it needs to be stirred. So I'm going to take my mini squeegee, put a little bit of paste on that, and drag it over the screen. Clean up the excess. Scrape it back into my jar because I can reuse it. Check my fingers. Peel it up from the side. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty. 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 Okay. Simply blessed. Cute little tag. Okay, I'm going to dry it. And then we'll get to making the beads. Get to getting. Okay, so we decided, well, we talked about, we didn't just, we didn't do any deciding. We thought, what would encourage you to give us stars? <laughs> and we said, for every 200 stars we receive, we will bring out one of our baby chicks for you to look at. <laughs> we'll see if that's an incentive for you. We have six baby chicks. So we, we have the availability of, 1200 stars <laughs> yes i like i like how rustic it is too and that's from the sanding and and that dark wax okay so that's done i'm going to set that aside and then set this aside i'm going to turn off my iron and i'm going to quickly clean my transfers because that's always a good habit to clean them up quickly Super easy to clean. They're reusable. 
So you can expect, and the company guarantees that you can get 10 to 12 uses out of the transfers, but we also know that if you take really good care of them, you get more uses than that out of it. So I spray them with water and I start with either a paper towel or this is a Swedish dishcloth, which is kind of like a reusable paper towel. And this is just pulling off that top layer of paste. This is totally optional, but it really helps save the life of my board eraser. What's a board eraser? Let me show you. Okay, this is a board eraser. It is much like a, uh, like a Mr. Clean magic eraser, but there's no chemicals in it. We don't want to use chemicals on these. Now I take the board eraser and it's going to pull off all that extra paste that the, the paper towel or the dish towel didn't get. And my goal is to get all that paste out of the screen. Yana sent 310. 310. Well, thank you. One and a half chicks? One and, yeah, one and a half chicks. I'll bring out, I'll bring out. Uh, well, well, let's wait and see. We'll bring out a little bit first. A <laughs> little bit. Our little blind girl. A little, a little. We, uh, we think we have a blind chicken. chicken little. She's either blind or she's got some cognitive problems. I think she's blind. But we talked to them at the, at the. North 40. North 40. Not that she was an expert, but she's around chicken. She says they, they find a way to adapt. So never fear. We are keeping our blind chicken. So I'm going to let these air dry. And when they are dry, I'm going to put them back on the backer sheet, put it away in its little cellophane home, and it'll be ready the next time I go to use it. Okay, so here I've got this. And now I have some jute some jute twine. Jute. Okay. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> then Lou said 50. Uh oh. We might have to put out a. Thank you so much. We might have to be having. Uh oh, we've got a stars party. If we have a stars party, do we have to bring all of them out? I don't know. Okay, well, if we, if we get the stars party, we'll bring out all the chickens. We'll have to get a container to put them in. <laughs> I'll find something. They're getting big enough they can, yeah. they can uh, <laughs> Thank you, Linda. It's amazing how fast they go. Okay, so this is um, from the Dollar Tree. It's just their Crafter's Square jute cord. You could use you could use any kind. And I'm going to I'm going to do my my little trick. You've got a little trick. When you try to thread this in and it starts to fray and then you can't ever get it through. There's, there's things you can do, but what I like to do is I like to just take a piece of tape, scotch tape, because it's it's kind of thin. I guess you could use masking tape, but you just kind of lay it on there and then you roll it up really tight. And you make like one of those things that are on your um, shoelaces. I think they're called aglets or something like that. Okay, and then you just you just roll that up really tight and it kind of works like a needle and then you push it through there and I'm gonna leave a length of this for to add beads and I'm gonna cut this off of there then I'm going to tie this So I just have a little knot there. And next I'm going to get some beads. These beads I got from Amazon. Okay, I wish I could see what all the stars party is going on anyway. Okay, so these I got from Amazon. You can get them, um, you can get them at craft stores, but honestly, I think they're cheaper in bulk on Amazon. I think I have a link for this on my business page under guides. Um, so I'm just going to take, and I think these are 20 millimeter. Okay. And I'm going to actually, the first couple of ones, I'm going to actually feed through both of these ends. 
so I don't have a loose end hanging out. <laughs> you spent 99 stars. Were I they freebies? <laughs> Were they your free ones? <laughs> I did, yes. Came up. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the stars. <laughs> okay. So these first couple of ones, I'm going to actually put put two layers of this jute through so I don't have any ragged ends. And I'll push that one through. Now you can paint these beads. You can buy them pre-painted. These are just the natural wood beads. You can paint them with uh, acrylic paint, chalk paint, whatever. Or you can just leave them natural. Or you can buy them pre-painted, pre-colored. I even have some that have, um, that are buffalo plaid. They're very cute. Okay. Let's see how long I'm going to do this. Maybe 20 beads or so. I don't know where he went. I think he went to go get a chicken. Okay, I'm going to cut this part off now. And make sure I'm cutting off the short end and not the long end. Okay, so we'll just have five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten. Okay, so does anybody have fun plans for the weekend? I hear, I hear chickies. I hear chickies. <laughs> you better go overhead. <laughs> Can you hear them? I'm going to set it down here. The black astrolorp wants to jump out. So. Okay. Okay, put him up here. And then, of course, the dogs are right there. Ooh, you're dirty. Yes, you're dirty. Hello, baby. Hello. Show everybody your cute little self. This is our little blind girl. Look here. at you. That is a black, whoops, that is a black astrolorp. And this one's our little girl. Got some crunchies on her eye or something. Yeah, crunchies on her behind too. Yeah. Yeah. That's so girl. she's our little blind girl. So they don't have names yet. We're we're waiting until they get a little bit bigger. Up, down we go. Down we go. And then That's our production red. This is one of our reds. Look at you. You got, so look at how you get they're getting their little feathers. They're so they're so, so cute. cute. Look at our baby. Did you see our little baby? Say hello. Say hello. Look at those. Look at those feathers. And they still have the little, little fringes from their pin from feathers. their fluff. Yeah. Their little pin feathers. I'm gonna feathers. take these back in. Put them back under the heat lamp. Yeah, we still we still have to heat them. They they live in eighty five to ninety degree temperatures. Yeah, they're cute. What do they do all day? They eat and poop. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I'm not sure how long I'm going to do this. However long you do it, it's completely up to you. Okay, was that 20? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
20. Let's do 25. Okay, one. Twenty-two. <laughs> Feeding the cats outside and couldn't figure out what it was. Yes. Our dogs are very fascinated. You should see Liberty's face. <laughs> oh, wait till Liberty gets up here. They will, they'll most likely be outside by then. Okay, so here is the beads strung. And remember that extra end I fed in through here. So it goes up several beads. And next we are going to make the tassel. So here is how I make a tassel. Okay, I just get some, I just get some jute. And you can wrap it around something like, like this if you wanted, or you could just wrap it around your four fingers and you go a bunch of times. So one, two, okay. Where three, was I? four. Where the little girl's bed. We gotta go in and clean up our okay. little girl before we get there. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, just however however thick you want it I think that's good somehow this has doubled itself very strange okay so I'm gonna trim that off there and trim that off there and then I don't know why this is doubled Okay. Where our cat is. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take this end here and I'm just going to go through here. So this is this is still all intact. And I'm going to and I'm just going to tie this on and I'm going to try to get it as tight as I can. up against those beads. So I've just tied that top. I'm gonna to do I'm gonna do one more. Okay. So that's attached there. And I'm going to try to string this back down so I don't have any loose ends. And this is this is starting to fray. Trim that. And I'm going to try to push that back up the bead. It's not wanting to cooperate. So, you know what? I'm just going to incorporate it. Okay. So, I'm just going to bring it straight down there. So, I've got I've got this where it bends and then I'm going to Pull it over here and I'm going to grab another piece of jute. I don't know the best way to go over the top. Or yeah, I think over the top. Over the top. All right, we'll do that. And then I'm going to make like the head on the on the tassel. Right like that. I think this ought to be one of your little reels, how to make that you tassel. Think so? Yeah, I think you ought to do that. This is a and good, and you know, this is pretty generic that everybody would like to know how to do, I think. Okay, so I'm going to go back over this way. By the way, the knot you just made was called the surgeon's knot. Yes, I doubled, I doubled it. Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of drag those down. And now I'm going to trim the end. So I'm going to start by snipping at the fold and then they're they're all kind of raggedy and I kind of take it and shake it and straighten it out and then I'm gonna trim it off straight it straight mm -hmm. yep so there we go so um I do have to say the Dollar Tree, the Dollar Tree twine is is not the highest quality. 
So if you used a better quality, um, if, 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 hashtag more expensive, um, it might lay a little better. Or if you take your your jute and stretch it out, because you can kind of see it's still kind of curved from this. But anyway, so there is my little tassel. And oh, I actually missed one. And just kind of make sure they're even. Now, if you wanted to paint those, could you paint them before you strung them? I would. Yeah, so if you wanted to paint the beads, I would I would paint them before you strung them on. And so here we go. Here is our little farmhouse bead set. And you can just lay it, like I said, it kind of lays around like it just doesn't care. You can lay it on your shelf if you have a tiered tray. It can kind of... You know, show off the tag and have the beads and just just whatever. I look for it in my future finished product pictures because that's why I made it because I wanted to have it available to to include in those shots. So so here's the simply blessed side, and then here is just a pretty floral tag that kind of looks like wood, and that's it. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. I don't know if we just lost everybody. No. But anyway, so here is here is our farmhouse beads. Pretty simple. And I'm gonna pose. Yeah. Find a way to find a way to pose. Find a way to pose. Do a pure Merrill. Alright, are you doing a fine job there? I'm doing a fine job. Okay, fine. so that was our project. I hope you liked it. I hope I hope you liked our little baby birds. Thank you so much for all the stars. And again, if you're interested in the transfer that I showed you, that's our club transfer. It's only available to our club members. So if you want to know more about club, which is our monthly DIY subscription service, um, type club and it'll send you a link and I can follow up and see if you have any other questions. Um, anything else you need from me, just mention it in the comments. I'll go through and I'll, I'll reach out to you with anything I need. Um, so always looking for new club members to join, always looking for people who are interested in, in joining as designers to join my team, if that's something you're interested in. Um, just hit me up in the comments and I'll reach out to you and, and we'll have a chat. So um, I don't believe we will be on tomorrow, but look for us uh, maybe on Sunday night. And I think, I think that's not it. coming up on here. Hold on for a second. Let's see if I can refresh this. If not, I'll just read it. Okay, Alana has a question, and okay. it didn't pop up on our okay. feed here. I have a question for Robin. I got my white tray from oh. Bingo Night, and I'm very excited about getting started on, on something okay. with it because it's such a shiny slick surface do i need to treat it in any yeah. special way you, before i do transfers? you don't need to treat the tray because if you put wax on it it's going to be waxy because it's it's metal um but you need to really fuzz the heck out of your transfer you need to get as much fuzz on that thing as you can or or use a used transfer that's been well used because it will really really stick so Fuzz it as much as you can. Um, only lay it down and press around where you need to. So don't go all the way up to the edges if you don't need to. Um, just around the design. And when you go to pull it up, um, you might need to kind of do a rocking effect. Because if you just grab it and pull, you'll probably stretch. So I would take two edges and start to pull and then just kind of rock back and forth, you know, pull a little bit from that side, pull a little bit from that side, take your time pulling it off. It's going to take, if it's really, really stuck, it's going to take a lot of pressure, but as long as you're slow and even your, your transfer should be fine. So that's the only thing you can really do is, is really put a lot of fuzz on that transfer. Hope that answers your question. Okay. If, if anybody has any questions about how these things work, again, reach out to me. I'll be glad to follow up with you. Um, until we see you again, 
make sure you do something creative every day. Enjoy your weekend and we will see you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.